To mention Afghanistan for many is to imagine war, explosion and suffering. When the Taliban came back to power in Kabul in August 2021, I decided to study this land and try to interpret from my point of view this turbulent succession of dramatic events. It's more than clear that some territories who is living in turbulent situations often suspended in wars context and disputed by most established economic powers are those realities that have potentially enormous exploitable natural reserves. Afghanistan is one of them. Officially known as the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, Afghanistan is located in the heart of Southwest Central Asia and has a growing population of about 31 million people. It is a geographically landlocked country, bordered to the south with Pakistan, to the west with Iran, to the north with Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan, and to the east with China. Torn apart by four decades of war and rampant poverty, several data made it know that almost 50% of Afghan people live below the poverty line with an average income of $2 per day. Several things drive Afghanistan's economy. Afghanistan ranked as 188th in the world for GDP. Agriculture traditionally dominates Afghanistan's economy and contributes largely to its growth. 70% of Afghans live and work in rural areas, mostly farms. According to the data, Afghanistan has about 50% of land suitable for cultivation. Afghanistan's agriculture has always been the main engine of the national economy. The export value of peanuts worth millions of dollars every year. Fruit and nuts are among the most important exports for Afghanistan. The territory is known for its usually sweet grapes and melons, which grow north of Hindu Kush. Other fruits are pomegranates, pistachios, apricots, cherries, figs and mulberries. Wheat and cereals are the most important crops such as barley, corn and rice. Cotton is also widely cultivated. Recently, the Taliban government said that in the first seven months of the last year, Afghanistan exported over $1 billion worth of products. 90-70% of Afghanistan exports mostly fresh fruit, dry fruit, vegetable, medicinal plants and minerals are concentrated towards Pakistan, Iran, India, Turkey and China. Another thing moves Afghanistan's economy, the natural resources of the country, such as coal, copper, natural gas, oil, cobalt, nickel, gold, lithium and uranium. According to U.S. military and geologists, Afghanistan is sitting on one of the richest mineral deposits in the world. The value of these resources has been estimated 1 trillion of dollars. If the government of Afghanistan makes excellent use of all its natural resources, the nation will boast one of the strongest economies in the world. The geological tectonic features of Afghanistan are very important for the formation of mineral deposits.
Afghanistan's mountainous history dates back thousands of years, and its beginnings are closely linked to its minerals. The geological history of Afghanistan is very old, probably one billion of years, and this land has a very varied and complex geology. Afghanistan is the geological meeting point involving the Eurasian Plate, the Indian Plate and the Arabian Plate. The suture zone between ancient continents, once separated by ocean, is the Herat Fault. One of the largest faults in the territory, which extends through central Afghanistan to the north in the Kush Mountains. The Bamiyan region lies in a transition zone between the intense seismic activity that characterizes the border of Indo-Asian plate of eastern Afghanistan and the largely inactive central part. The herds crossed in Afghanistan is particularly lively and the earthquakes that often occur are caused by Indian plate and Eurasian plate collisions. This kind of movement has generated mountains such as Himalayas, Indukush, which is the second most seismic belt in the world after the Pacific Ring of Fire, and the Pamir Mountains in the northern Afghanistan, which the Afghans call the roof of the world. Over 49% of Afghanistan's territory is above 2,000 meters. The Alpine belt that characterizes the typical territory consists of up to 15,000 mountains. The persistent tectonic movements over the millions of years have provided the necessary heat and pressure to form gemstones. Afghanistan is one of the oldest gemstone mineral areas in the world. Historically, the ancient Silk Road that connected China to Europe through the Middle East passed directly into northern Afghanistan, and its natural resources such as tin, copper, gold and lapis lazuli were exported far and wide. Historians believe that lapis lazuli, the stone widely appreciated by ancient civilization, has Mesopotamia, Egypt, China, Greece, Rome and India, came from the famous mines in today's remote province of Badakhshan, a wasteland characterized by forbidden mountains walls that reach up to 17,000 feet in height and step ravines. The Badakhshan's mines were already in operation 7000 BC. Since 700 BC, the Koksha Valley, based in a deep gorge in the province of Badakhshan, was part of a territory known as Bactria. The valley was on a favorite destination, even if in a hospitable position, to looking for the beautiful lapis lazuli. This gem is among the oldest commercial sources in the world. Ancient Sumerian royal funeral sites contained several artifacts made from lapis lazuli, weapons, statuettes, animals, jewelry, as well as dishes and trimmings. While in Egypt, burial sites dating back to 3000 BC contained thousands of jewels. Lapis lazuli was favorite to make amulets and ornaments, such as scarabs, and widely used by Egyptian women as a cosmetic pigment. Lapis lazuli's commercial trade, influenced by geographical environment and political situation, historically would have taken place with a privileged contact between Balochistan in Sudhast Iran region. 
Indus Valley, Arabian Gulf, until reaching ancient Mesopotamia and Egypt afterwards. The ancient merchants caravans transported the precious lapis lazuli from Bactria to the large and important cities. Mark Polo in 1271 in his writings referred to the Bactria's lapis mines. Mountain where the finest blue in the world is found. In the 19th century, British Army Lieutenant John Wood reached the Lapis Mines for the East India Company. He provided a detailed and picturesque description of an expedition between 1836 and 1838 in Badakhshan. He became the first European to visit the mines and to write about the difficulties of access. If you do not wish to die, avoid the Valley of Koksha. The Valley of Koksha is sparsely populated and covered by snow during the year. The barrier region is inhabited by wild hogs and wolfies. The summer sun is scorching and temperatures drop below freezing at night. The Ministry of Mines and Petroleum regulates mining in Afghanistan. In 2004, American geologists arrived in Afghanistan as a part of a larger reconstruction effort, came across a series of old papers at the Afghan Geological Survey Library in Kabul hinting at the main mineral deposits in the country, whose information was collected by Soviet mining experts during the occupation in 1980. The United States Geological Survey carried out a series of 28 flights in 33 days, collected the data of a hyperspectral imaging of Afghanistan soil, this technique allows to disguise the, the specific colors present on the surface, such as minerals that make up the analyzed place. Each pixel of the camera has been analyzed and correlated with the different materials that reflected on a given color. The publication consists of two maps iron containing minerals and carbon silicon or sulfur you are seeing now some of the sources which make afghanistan a container of treasures With hydrocarbon rich Iran and Turkmenistan to its west, Afghanistan harbors 1 billion barrels of crude oil, 16 trillion cubic meters of natural gas, and another 500 million barrels of natural gas liquids. From very few information about Afghan oil, the latest value from 1980 to 2020 is 0%. Afghanistan has not developed an oil industry of its own. Despite the unclear data, some rumors have appeared over the years. Afghan Ministry and United States Geological Service studies estimate hypothetical barrels of crude oil not yet discovered. Afghanistan signed an agreement with China National Petroleum Corporation to begin oil production in 2013. In 2019, according to the joint Afghan report with the US, it was stated that most of the undiscovered crude oil occurs in the Afghan Tajik Basin, and most of the undiscovered natural gas is located in the Amu Daria Basin. These two basins within Afghanistan encompass areas of approximately 515,000 square kilometers.
Afghanistan ranks 72nd for global gas reserves, with an estimate of 1,750,000 million cubic meters. Oil and gas fields were discovered in 1970 during Soviet-led exploration. In 2020, Afghanistan began extracting gas from an annually discovered field in the northern province of Jovsyan. This project is extracting 150,000 cubic meters of gas. One of the most important projects for Central Asia has been the TAPI pipeline, also known as Afghanistan Pipeline, developed by Gakinish TAPI Pipeline Company with the Asian Development Bank participation. The pipeline started in 2015 and will transport natural gas from the Gakinish gas field in Turkmenistan to Afghanistan into Pakistan and then to India. As of 2022, pipeline constructions remains stalled. Afghanistan has large marble walls and has at least 21 marble factories. There is a wide marble variety currently extracted from the quarries of Belk, Badakhshan, Bamiyan, Helmand, Herat, Kabul and many other places. Kesht, Sharif and Kojani marble are the most beautiful and durable marble in the world and are favorable compared to Italian Carrara marble. From the surveys conducted, 1 billion tons of extractable marble have been classified. The international community has recognized that the Afghan marble industry holds great promise for the future. One of the most important resources in Afghanistan is copper. Afghanistan ranks among the top five nations for copper reserves. Copper is historically present in Herat, Farah, Kandahar, Kapisa and Zabul provinces. In 2006, China Metallurgical Group won a public tender to lead the mining project in Ainak, in Logar province. However, the lack of infrastructure in the country has led this project to low progress. In the valley of Mess Ainak, which means a small copper deposit in Dari, copper reserves are estimated to be huge, up to 450 million tons. However, Mess Ainak holds important archaeological sites and Buddhist monasteries dating back to thousand years when Buddhism was the local religion, and the meaning area will take another years of work. Afghanistan's gold is found in Takar, Badakhshan and Ghazni province. Afghan gold resource can be considered modest with about 2,700 kilo for a value of $170 million. When the Taliban took power in Afghanistan in 2021, the USA administration froze the Afghan government's holding in US banks, preventing them from accessing the country's billion of dollars of foreign reserves. Among these trapped assets will be a stockpile of gold bars at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, which, according to data published by Central Bank, amounted to about 22 tons of gold in December 2020. The history of Afghan gold has extended since ancient times. 
In 1978, a year before the Soviet Union invasion in Afghanistan, Russian archaeologist Viktor Ivanovich Saryanidi began excavating at the site of Tilya Tepe in North Afghanistan, discovering an important treasure known as Bakhtian gold. Bakhtian gold is thought to have been buried by Scythian or Chinese nomads at the beginning of the Christian era. During ancient times, the Bactrian area was repeatedly conquered and reconquered by many civilizations. There was probably a rich site for Actifat left by different cultures. The archaeological work has discovered six tombs dating back to the first century and more than 20,000 gold objects, such as coins, weapons, rings, earrings, bracelets, and crowns. Some of these made with precious stones, such as a turquoise, carnelian, and lapis lazuli. 25,000 gold actifat discovered have disappeared without a trace during the war, and part of this collection has been recreated. Some of these are located at the National Museum of Afghanistan. Iron is the most abundant of Afghanistan's valuable metals. The country has a significant iron deposit in the Hajigak mine, located in the Bamiyan province. With over 1 billion tons of high-grade ore at 73 and 79% iron, these billion tons of iron could be used to construct at least 200,000 replicas of Paris Eiffel Tower. In 2019, a report states that Afghanistan has over 2 billion tons of high-quality iron necessary for steel production, with a total value of more than $350 billion. Afghanistan ranks among the top 10 nations in the world in the extractable iron sector. Lithium is called as the new oil. Lithium is a mineral notoriously mined in the so-called Lithium Triangle in South America, which possesses the largest lithium reserves in the world. In 2010, the U.S. Department of Defense described Afghanistan as Saudi Arabia of lithium meaning the country could potentially become a supplier of lithium, as Saudi Arabia is crucial for its oil reserves. According to Pentagon's analysis, Afghanistan would have lithium deposits as large as those existing in Bolivia, the world consolidating its environmental agenda and moving towards the decarbonization of energy systems will increasingly need lithium for battery creation needed for electric vehicles. In the last 25 years, lithium demand and use is rapidly growing and it will increase more in the coming years. Under these circumstances, the futures of lithium-ion batteries could depend on who will have control of Afghan reserves. So far, countries such as China, Russia and Iran have revealed their intention to develop friendly relationship with the Taliban. China is the absolute leader in red hard metals mining and the largest lithium cells producer. In 2019, the Ministry of Mines report state Afghanistan holds over 1 million tons of red hard metals, mainly found in Helmand province. Red hearts is a group of 70 chemical elements. They are essential components in technological and electronic field, widely used for mobile phones, televisions, hybrid engines, generators, computers, lasers, batteries, 
activities, fluorescent lighting, wind turbines, and military equipment, such as night vision goggles, precision weapons, and GPS equipment. Rare hurts the mad saw its first explosion in sixes when the first televisions entered in the market. Europium was the essential material for producing color images. Over the past 20 years, the growing demand for mobile phones and computers has driven up rare hertz needs and will increasing as in the world goes electric. China is the world's largest producer of rare hertz materials and is also the dominant consumer. China's dominance peaked in 2010 when rare earth control and production reached 95% globally. Afghanistan has always historically been a major source of lapis lazuli, as well as other gemstones such as rubies and emeralds. In 2018, the country exported $100,000 million of gems. One of the challenges, however, is still to modernize extraction gemstones methods. Over the years, miners have always used expired Russia dynamite, which in addition to being dangerous, caused products damaging. Afghanistan is a source of good quality minerals for many collectors. Gemstone mining in Afghanistan is typically an artisanal activity carried out by people living in the villages surrounding the mines. The low value stones are cut for the domestic Pakistan market, and the medium high quality stones are sent around the world for accurate cutting for Western markets. There are four main gemstone producing areas Penshi Valley, Jagdalek area, Badakhshan, and Nuristan, which producing a wide range of semi precious gems such as tourmaline, kanzite, aquamarine, spodumene, and merrill. Afghan emeralds are considered one of the best for its finest quality and purity. Emeralds are mainly found in Penshi Valley in Parvan province. Kanzite is one of the oldest gems in the world, first discovered in America at the beginning of the 20th century. However, it is also found in the same arid highlands of Afghanistan and Nuristan, where since 1980, approximately 2,000 kg of fine kanzite have been extracted. Ruby is mainly found in Jagdaleg and Kandamak in Kabul province. The Jagdalek mines were worked in 1637 for marble used to build Taj Mahal. Sapphire deposits are largely found in Badakhshan. One of the several Afghan onyx mines is in a group of mountains in Dishu district in the southern Afghan province of Helmand, while aquamarine is found in Nuristan, passing through the provinces of Lagman and Connor. I could to list many other gems such as garnet, amethyst, hydenite, tourmaline, beryl, serpentine, topaz, and spinel. Over the past years, armored vehicles carrying Chinese officials and entrepreneurs have been seen at the headquarters of the Afghan Ministry of Mines and Petroleum, making those an offbeats for future mining connections. China could become Afghanistan's main investor and benefactor, which could help the mining sector development and fill the financial gap in the country, providing a strong economic boost. If you like my video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching!